Assalamualaikum dan salam sejahtera. Hi everyone. In this chapter, we will learn about immunity. Immunity is the resistance to particular pathogens and their toxin. The purpose of immunity is to protect the body against infection. Let's go through the video about immunity. Our body has a powerful army that protects it from various types of threats. These threats can come in the form of mechanical injuries, the entry of germs, or the entry of other foreign particles like dust. This personal army is called the immune system. Every day we encounter a huge number of bacteria, viruses, and other disease-causing organisms. However, we don't fall ill every other day which is due to our immune system, an army of cells that is always roaming our body, ready to ward off any attack. There are two subtopics in this chapter, which is 11.1 immune response and 11.2 developments of immunity. There are four learning outcomes for subtopic 11.1 immune response. The first LO is to define immunity and state the types of immunity. Second LO is to describe the general structure of antibody and state the classes based on its structure. Next LO is to state the roles of lymphoid organs in immunity, which is thymus, spleen, tonsil, lymph nodes, and bone marrow. And the last LO in this subtopic is to explain the various types of antigen and antibody interaction, which is neutralization, opsonization, activations of complement system, and pore formation. What is definitions of immunity? Based on Solomon 10 edition, immunity is the ability to recognize and destroy foreign or dangerous macromolecules. But, based on biological science, immunity is the capacity to recognize the intrusions of material foreign to the body, to mobilize cell and cell product to help remove that particular sort of foreign material with greater speed and effectiveness. Types of Immunity There are two types of immunity, which is innate immunity and adaptive immunity. Innate immunity is recognition of traits shared by a broad range of pathogens using a small set of receptor and rapid response. But adaptive immunity is recognition of traits specific to particular pathogens using a vast array of receptors and slower response. Barrier defense and internal defense is the example for innate immunity. But for adaptive immunity, the example is humoral response and cell mediated response. The next video will explain more about innate immunity. The immune system can be broadly divided into two parts, innate and adaptive immunity. Innate immunity, or non-specific immunity, is the body's first natural defense to any intruder. This system doesn't care what it's killing. Its primary goal is to prevent any intruder from entering the body, and if it does enter, then the immune system neutralizes this intruder doesn't differentiate between one pathogen and another. The first component of this defensive system is our skin. Any organism trying to get into the body is stopped by the skin, our largest organ, which covers us. 
Secondly, there is the mucus lining of all our organs. The sticky, viscous fluid traps any pathogens trying to get past it. These are the two physical barriers. However, we also have chemical barriers, such as the lysozyme in the eyes, or the acid in the stomach, which can kill pathogens trying to gain entry. The genitourinary tract and other places have their own normal flora or microbial community. These compete with pathogens for space and food, and therefore also act as a barrier. The next line of defense is inflammation, which is done by mast cells. These cells are constantly searching for suspicious objects in the body. When they find something, they release a signal in the form of histamine molecules. These alert the body, and blood is rushed to the problem area. This causes inflammation and also brings leukocytes, or white blood cells, which are soldiers in our body's cellular army. Once they come, all hell breaks loose. Sometimes, however, the intruder may not be a germ, but rather a harmless thing like a dust particle. The body still causes a full immune reaction to this intruder, which is how allergic reactions occur. In the fortress of our body, the leukocytes are VIPs. They have an all-access pass to the body, except, of course, to the brain and spinal cord. Our leukocytes come in many types. Those that belong to the innate system are the phagocytes. These cells can either patrol your body, like the neutrophils, or they can stay in certain places and wait for their cue. Neutrophils are the most abundant cells. They patrol the body and can therefore get to a breach site very quickly. These cellular soldiers kill the infectious cell and then die, which leads to the formation of pus. There are also the big bad wolves, or the macrophages. These cells are like hungry, ravenous monsters who simply engulf unwanted pathogens. Instead of roaming freely in our blood, they are collected in certain places. These cells can consume about 100 pathogens before they die, but they can also detect our own cells that have gone rogue, such as cancer cells, and kill them too. Beyond that, we also have the natural killer cells. These cells can efficiently detect when our own cells have gone rogue, or are infected with, say, a virus. NKCs detect a protein produced by normal cells called the major histocompatibility complex, or MHC. Basically, Whenever a cell isn't normal, it stops producing this protein. The NKCs move around constantly, checking our cells for this type of deficiency. And when they find an abnormal cell, they simply bind to it, release chemicals, and destroy it. The last cells of our innate immune system are the dendritic cells. These are found in places that come in contact with the outside environment, such as the nose and lungs. They are the link between our innate and adaptive immune system. What is antibody? Antibody is a specific protein that recognizes and binds to specific antigen which produced by the plasma cell. An antibody is also called an immunoglobulin Ig. Okay, we continue on the structure of antibody. The structure of antibody in Y shape. An antibody molecule is composed of four polypeptides linked by the disulfide bridge. Two identical short polypeptides called light chain and two identical long polypeptides called heavy chain. All four chains have a variable V region and a constant C region. The V region of a heavy chain and light chain combine to form an antigen binding site on each arm. The C region determine the mechanism of antibody action, for example, whether it can bind complement proteins. Okay, the next video will explain the detailed structure of antibody. We concluded the previous video with an introduction to the concept of antigen-antibody interaction. Let's have a look at this concept in detail in this video. Any idea how this interaction takes place? 
The answer lies in the structure of the particular antibody. Antibodies, also known as immunoglobulins, are denoted with the abbreviation IG. They are Y-shaped protein molecules which are made up of different peptide chains. Here we have a complete representative structure of a typical antibody. This structure of antibody is basically studied by dividing it into two parts. The constant region and the variable region formed by these peptide chains. As the name suggests, the constant region means the peptide chains remain the same in all antibodies. On the other hand, the variable regions will have peptide chains that can get altered as per the requirement. And what will this requirement be? That's right, the requirement will be the shape of this site depending on the structure of the antigen. Needless to say, the antigen binding site will be present in this variable region. There are many detailed parts and structures present within these variable and constant regions. But we will keep them reserved for the higher grades. For now, all we need to know is that all these parts together constitute a complete antibody. In us, humans to be precise, we have different types of antibodies. These include IgM, IgG, IgA, IgD and IgE. For now, let's just know their names. And let's understand how any type The immune system depends on special binding molecules called immunoglobulins. These are also known as antibodies. Immunoglobulins are often referred to in shorthand as simply Ig. IGs are Y-shaped molecules which connect on one end to an invading microbe, which is known as an antigen, and then they connect on the other end to bind with various white cells. These specialized antibody molecules come in different shapes and sizes, which provide a great deal of flexibility in matching and destroying targeted antigens. Antibody molecules are found floating in the plasma as well as on the surface of specialized B cells. Immunoglobulins are constructed from two types of amino acid chains, heavy chains and light chains. Ig molecules contain two identical strands of heavy chains and two identical strands of light chains. The side of the Ig that has two heavy chains forms a stable non-variable receptor point called an effector. This effector is part of the Ig molecule that binds with our own immune system cells. On the opposite end of the antibody are two antigen binding sites, each with a light chain and a heavy chain combination. This combination of light and heavy chains forms highly variable tips that can adapt to specifically match a wide range of antigens. Immunoglobulins come in five basic types, IgA, IgD, IgE, IgG, and IgM. Each type targets a specific type of antigen, which determines the Y chain structure of each type of Ig. IgD, IgE, and IgGs all use a single Y chain, whether they stand alone or as receptors connected to white cells. IgAs use a double Y chain, which is called a dimer. IgMs are unique in that they form either as a single Y chain when expressed on the surface of a B cell, but the standalone version of the IgM molecule forms a combination of five Y chains, which is known as a pentamer. Consequently, standalone IgMs form a very large antibody molecule. Now we continue on the classes of antibody. There are five classes of antibodies IgA, IgD, IgE, IgG, and IgM, named according to the structure of constant region. IgD, IgE, and IgG are monomers. IgA 
is a dimer composed of two co-joint monomers. IgM is a pentamer composed of five monomers. In this video, it will explain more about the classes of antibody. Let's take a closer look at the five types of antibody immunoglobulins. There are two types of IgAs. These are not typically found in the blood, but in secretions of the gut, saliva, sweat, milk, respiratory tract, and urinary tract. IgAs are part of our innate immune system and fight pathogens such as bacteria, viruses, fungus, and parasitic worms. IgDs are primarily found on the surface membrane of B cells, but account for a very tiny portion of the free-floating antibodies found in the plasma. IgDs are the least well-known antibody, however they are known to play a role in the activation of basophils and mast cells to attack invading microbes. IgEs respond to parasitic worms as well as allergens such as pollen. The effector side of the IgE is ideally matched to mast cells and basophils. And once the receptor side of the IgE comes into contact with one of these antigens, the mast cell and basophil will release histamine molecules causing the inflammatory symptoms we know as an allergic reaction. The four types of IgGs account for 70 to 80 percent of the entire immunoglobulin pool in the body. IgGs target pathogenic organisms such as bacteria, viruses, and parasitic worms. They attach to the antigens on one end while the opposite end binds with a phagocyte white cell, including macrophages, neutrophils, and natural killer cells, which absorb and destroy the antigen. IgG is the smallest of the Ig molecules, allowing it to easily migrate into the tissues of the body. Only 45% are found in the blood. Almost every man-made monoclonal antibody in clinical use today is in the IgG family. The early responders are IgMs. These function to eliminate pathogens early on in the attack before there are sufficient levels of IgGs. IgMs are known as a macroglobulin because of their large size. They are the largest of the immunoglobulins and make up 6 to 10 percent of the total Ig pool. Okay, we continue on the LO number 3, Rules of Lymphoid Organ. The lymphatic system includes the limb, lymphatic vessel, and lymphatic organs such as bone marrow, limb nodes, tonsil, spleen, and thymus gland. Okay, we look on the first organ that involved in the lymphatic system, which is thymus gland. Thymus is the gland that produces several hormones that are important in developing and maintaining immune defense. Example, thymosin. Thymus also is the site where the lymphocyte cell matches. The next organ is bone marrow. The role of bone marrow is the site of origin of all types of blood cell. Tonsil. Tonsil will provide protection against pathogens and other potentially harmful materials that enter in from the nose and mouth. It will trap bacteria and viruses which will breath in and prevent infection in the lung and throat. Limb nodes. Limb nodes are located in regions where they can detect and eliminate harmful intruders before they can reach the vital organ. 
The role of lymph nodes is to filter and purify lymph before it reaches the vein. The last lymphoid organ is spleen. The functions of spleen is to remove abnormal blood cell and other components by phagocytosis. It also stores iron recycle from erythrocyte. Spleen will initiate immune response by B cell and T cell in response to antigen in circulating blood. What is antigen? Antigen is any foreign molecule that elicits an immune response by binding to receptor of B cell or T cell. Antigen usually protein, glycoprotein, or polysaccharide. An antigen may have several different epitopes. Epitope is the part of an antigen molecule to which an antibody attaches itself. Each epitope is recognized by a different antibody. Different antibodies can recognize distinct epitopes on the same antigen. Antigen-antibody interaction There are three antigen-antibody interactions, which is neutralization, opsonization, and activations of complement system and pore formation. Neutralization Neutralization is antibody bound to antigens on the surface of a virus, neutralize it, by blocking its ability to bind to a host cell. This occurs when the antibody binds to the virus surface protein or bacterial toxin and making them incapable of attach to a host cell, thus harmless. Opsonization Opsonization is the bindings of antibodies to antigens on the surface of bacteria, promotes phagocytosis by macrophage and neutrophil. Activations of complement system and pore formation occurs when the bindings of antibodies to antigens on the surface of a foreign cell activates the complement system followed by the membranes attack complex form spores in the foreign cell membranes, allowing water and ion to rush in. The cell swells and eventually lyses. Okay, that's all for subtopic 11.1. The next video will show you the next subtopic 11.2 developments of immunity. Thank you.